Hey guys, this is Joy back again with another video and I just wanted to say thank you so much for tuning into my channel. You guys are amazing. Please keep tuning in and also please keep making sure that you are leaving questions and comments so that way I can make videos about it. You guys are doing a really good job. Please keep it up. Um, don't be afraid to ask me a question. I'll answer anything. So yeah, um, let's go ahead and get into the question and answer. Um, this question here is going to be the theme of the video. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So it comes from Jessica Espin Espino. I hope I said that right. <laughs> so it says, hey Joy, thanks for replying and making that recent video. I am very new to all of this. So I do have a lot of questions and and I'm very confused. It's been super hard on me. Like I said before, I am pregnant due in March. My narc baby father hasn't called me because he's in he's been in jail since December 2017. I put him there because he was being abusive and I had enough. I'm happy you did that. He has cheated on me with a couple of girls and I know damn well he's calling this girl Daisy. He cheated on me with I really was fooled. I thought this was the guy for me. Yeah, we all feel that way as well. They make us feel that way in the beginning. Then she says, he love bombed me, isolated me, and then it progressed so fast. My question to you is if he is calling this girl in jail, is he love bombing her? And isn't and why isn't he calling me? I know you don't have the specific uh, answers, whatever, but this is my first time dealing with this kind of person. It has been hard. They ruin your life. Yes, indeed. Plus, never take responsibility for their actions. They play you from day one. That's right. Um, like I've heard, he gets out in May of 2018 this year. But from your experience, just because he isn't calling me, is he trying to get control and have me thinking? And also, I do wonder if he is... Taking taking this time to totally love bomb that girl Daisy. Our baby will be born by the time he's out. So I'm not sure if he's giving me silent treatment or what this really is. So um, again, Jessica, I am very sorry for your situation. And, you know, having a baby by the narcissist can definitely be difficult. You know, you're really going to have to make sure that you... Um, maintain your distance, um, having, you know, you, you're going to have to contact him, you know, if he's planning on being in, you know, um, you know, your child's life, you know, and, um, you're go probably going to have to implement, um, you know, really strong boundaries, um, the gray rock method for sure. Um, perhaps maybe getting a restraining order if it gets out of control, but since you said that you think he may be in contact with this girl Daisy, then it could get, um, you know, quite interesting. But to answer your question, so you want to know if he's calling this girl in jail, is he love bombing her? More than likely, that's possible um, because if the narcissist is being in contact with you, it's only because they're trying to use you for something. And love bombing is something that they all do in the beginning of the relationship. You know, if this is you guys' first time listening to me, if you don't know what love bombing is, it's basically the narcissist, you know, just showing you a lot of attention, making you feel like you're the only one, making you feel special, you know, calling you constantly, texting you constantly, buying you gifts, showing you a lot of attention, a lot of focus, a lot of compliments, you know, basically boosting your ego, you know, um, yeah, it, they do a lot of that in the beginning, and um, it kind of hooks you, and, you know, it makes you feel like, wow, this person really does like me. This person has a lot of feelings for me. Um, you know, you want to believe that it's real, but unfortunately it's not. And the reason why he isn't calling you is because he knows that he has you already. I mean, because basically like you're having his child and um, he knows that you're going to be attached to him like for the next 18 to 25 years, you know. So he's not calling you because he knows that you're probably going to be there anyways. So he's probably contacting this new girl, love bombing her, so that way he can have his extra supply around, you know, just in case if it doesn't work out with you, you know. And then, um, 
But and then your other question you wanted to know from my experience is he, um, just because he isn't calling, is he trying to get control? I think, yeah, it could definitely be a, manipula a manipulation tactic to get even more control over you once he is out of jail. And the longer that he doesn't contact you, he knows the more that you're going to be wanting to know, like, how's he doing? Is he OK? Like, how like um, are you guys going to work it out or whatever, you know? So that's probably why he's not calling you. And yeah, he is trying to have you think. Um, so, yes. And then, um, and you say you do wonder if he's taking his time to totally love bomb that girl, Daisy. Yeah, I think he is. I think he is definitely love bombing her. Like I said, she's definitely going to be like another source of supply of somebody. Especially if you said that he um, uh, he cheated on you. Then, yeah. Oh, yeah, with the girl Daisy, for sure. He's just going to have her lining up, like, waiting in the wings for him. And he's doing the same thing with you. So he's basically playing both of you guys at the same time. Um, so, yeah, I and, again, just when he does get out, I would highly recommend, um, you know, really having your strong boundaries. No, uh, not it depends if you want to have the contact with him because you can just say you know what forget it like no contact but you could have the gray rock method you know um so he could meet the baby or whatever and try not to have any reaction to what he's doing because more than likely he probably will be with the new girl daisy once he's out um especially since you put him in jail so he's like she knows like how i am and you know like the fact that he was abusing you and you put him in jail so he knows that you could say okay at any moment all right you you're going to jail if you're not treating me right so he knows that you're strong enough to to do that and the other girl daisy may not be as strong so that's why he's probably um contacting her love bombing her and stuff like that so getting her emotionally invested emotionally evolved trying to like really secure that supply for, so that way when he does get out he will have her and Daisy, um, yeah, for sure. So definitely, he's definitely contacting Daisy. And so, yeah, Jessica, thank you so much for your question. Um, I really appreciate that. And I would highly recommend you get my audio, Understanding the Narcissist in a New Supply. It could definitely help you out. So, yeah, thank you so much for your question. If you have any other ones, please make sure that you leave them in the comment box. So, yeah, that was a great question. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and continue with the, um, the questions and comments. So the next question comes from Charlene Fernandez. She says in this, uh, the, the past video that I made, um, she says, you stated that the narcissist and the borderline have similar traits. Can you do a video of some of the difference between the two or a checklist of certain characteristics to determine if you may be dealing with a narcissist? Yes, indeed. I will most definitely do that. Because, like I said in the other video, they definitely have similar ways of how they treat people and how they act and just their whole being. Um, and, you know, you could get confused, just like kind of like how I was. Because, like I said, the second guy that I was dealing with, I thought that he was a narcissist. But once I started doing a little bit more research, I found out that he was a borderline. So, yeah, that video will be coming up very shortly. Thank you for your um, comment. Um, K Meg says, my ex-boyfriend discarded me for a new supply, but kept texting me wanting to be my friend. Um, I eventually cut him off six months ago. I'm happy you did that. It was hurting me to, uh, talking to him and stopping me from moving on. Yeah. Um, unfortunately that's the whole point. The reason, you know, they get a new supply and they are constantly still wanting to be in contact with you, which it doesn't make any sense. It really confuses you because you're like, you still love that person, but they have moved on. Even though they moved on, doesn't doesn't necessarily mean that they love that new person. They never like they don't love anybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, they just want to stop you from moving on, distract you from, you know, going to maybe a healthier relationship, you know, because they are not healthy, you know, and the people that they're with unfortunately aren't healthy or they're not they're um they don't know how to set uh boundaries or they're just kind of like just really aware of like what's happening and not really able to recognize the signs and you know maybe maybe have trouble with like codependencies and stuff like that so um I'll definitely be making videos about those topics as well so thank you Kim Egg for your comment 
Uh, the next comment comes from Mr. H.A. Double, and he says, She did it again, another great video. Joy, thank you for sharing your knowledge and experience with these very toxic and evil people. It takes a person like you to bring awareness throughout the world to the situation. I can honestly say that I didn't know what a narcissist was until this year, and I'm so glad that I found out about these parasites. God bless you, Joy, no problem. God bless you as well, and thank you for that lovely comment. It really does mean a lot. So, yeah, the next comment comes from uh, Shanisha Henry. She says, my ex-narc and his new supply uh, Facebook friend requested me. I'm done with him. Triangulation and pathological envy is the narc personality. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, the narc, the ex-narc and the new supply, they will friend request you, um, stalk you, uh, use fly monkeys to just bother you. Like, it just doesn't make any sense, you know. It's just attention for the narcissist and the new supply. Is just because the new um, the new supply has probably heard a lot of things about you from the ex narc. He's probably they do a lot of like smear campaigning and just they talk about you like not in a good way. So you know it's just it's really crazy. But thank you for your comment. And then um, another comment comes from Pamela McAllister. Uh, she says, you are somewhat unclear. We all know what no contact is. This was on my um, video that I made a couple months back. But she says, um, for you have left. She says, we all know what um, no contact is. She says, for you have left a relationship and are free. But the silent treatment is when you are still with the narc. We all know this behavior as to when they ignore you, you are invisible. They say nothing to you even when you talk to them. Short, nasty responses, leave early and gone most of the day. And when back home says nothing to you, mean, nasty. How, uh, oh, now you can do the same to them. But this, my dear, is the difference between no contact. Um... In silent treatment, you really feel hurt and feel the abuse in silent treatment. But in your no contact phase, you are out of the relationship and on your way to healing. And this um, comment, I actually left another comment underneath. So I basically like kind of responded to that. And, you know, you guys, if you ever feel like if something that I'm saying is unclear, you could definitely like leave that in the comment box and tell me like how you feel like. All of the comments don't necessarily have to be, like, great. Or if you feel like something is unclear or you're not understanding something, let me know because I want to be, like, helpful to each and every one of my subscribers, you know, because that's why I'm here. I want to help you guys understand narcissistic abuse, heal, and move on, you know what I mean? So thank you for this, uh, Pamela. But what I would say is, you know, we all have our own perspectives on how, you know, no contact or the silent treatment is but for me personally just because um you went no contact doesn't necessarily mean that you're free and I and I said that underneath the comment on what she said um because sometimes you know you may go no contact and you may contact them you know just out of you know just being lonely or just you may be feeling you may have a weak moment so just because you do go no contact doesn't necessarily mean that you're completely done you know what I mean and that's just my perspective we all have our own perspectives nobody is like right or wrong it's just kind of like a perception you know what I mean and then the silent treatment um is when you're still with the narc that to me that's not necessarily true I feel like the silent treatment I mean, maybe in their mind, they may think that they're still with you, but you know that the relationship is possibly over, something's off. You're not really with them. I mean, some it, it could be a different case. Like, if you're living with them, and yeah, you, um, they're giving you the silent treatment because you didn't agree with what they said, or you didn't do something that you, they wanted you to do. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah, but I definitely, um, I appreciate this comment, you know. So, yeah, hopefully that um answers that and the last comment comes from Val Shelby uh says hi Joy nice to meet you thank you for sharing uh thank you for saying you're amazing too no problem and yeah you guys this has been the video I do appreciate all of the questions and all of the comments and again you guys if there's something that's unclear to you you don't understand please leave it in the comment box and I could clarify it for you guys I, that's why I'm here um, and also you guys make sure, um, you be on the lookout for my new audio 
course that's coming out called Seven Steps to Moving On from Narcissistic Abuse. I'm really excited to be sharing that with you guys. It will be out within the next week or two. You guys will have that available. And then um, be sure that you get my um, new audio that's out already, Understanding the Narcissist and the New Supply. That will be in the comment box as well. Just, you know, if you're still struggling to understand, like, why your ex-narc is doing what he's doing with the new supply, why he's parading this person around, and you can't understand why they're taking, they're doing things with the new supply that they wouldn't do with you. Like, you wanted to be with them, and they was like, oh, well, let me wait it out and see. And now you see them in a relationship with someone else, or you wanted to travel with the narcissist. They never wanted to travel with you, but now they're traveling with someone else. You get what I'm saying? So just understanding like little things like that, like why you were dumped and discarded, you know, because this audio is really here to, like I said, help help you to get closure, help you to get understanding, help you to get, um, you know, just knowledge and um, wisdom about just the situation and like what it is that you're dealing with and why you're getting stalked, why are you getting Facebook request messages from random people you know flying monkeys so yeah you guys that's been the video thank you for tuning in make sure you like share subscribe to my channel i would like to get up to a thousand subscribers before the end of the month i know in the other video i said it before the end of the year i know i'll do it before the end of the year but i'd like to get up to a thousand subscribers before the end of this month uh, we could do it together make sure that you are following me on instagram at live narc free make sure you like my facebook page live narc free as well and on my website which i'll leave that below as well i have a blog so if you guys want to like read my blogs i'll leave that below as well like lots of good content lots of good advice and i'm also going to be giving out a free ebook um, I haven't, I'm not really sure what the topic is going to be just yet. It might be identifying signs of narcissists, um, like how to, uh, tell if you're dealing with a narcissist. So I'm going to be giving out a free ebook. Um, some other things I'm going to be giving away to you guys, just cause like I said, I want to get this, this, uh, message out to as many people as I can. And I just want to help. That's all I want to do. I'm here for you guys. And I only want to deal with people that want to, solve their problems that want to heal that want to get better because this is you know dealing with narcissists is tough you know you are you have been abused you have been traumatized you know and it's not easy to get over it takes time you know it takes talking to someone about it, it takes um acknowledging that hey this is something that's not right and you have to work on it you know so but yeah guys thank you for tuning into the video and i will see you in the next one have a great day bye